Hi lovelies, it's MLP with Lovely Lulu Designs and in today's video I'm going to show you how to get a gorgeous finish by using a flood coat. The quality of your final coat can make or break your tumblers. A beautiful finish will make your tumblers look more professional and enhance the quality of your work. All right, so the first step for me when I am doing a final coat is I put my um, part A of my epoxy in a warm water bath. So basically, um, I, I use CC DIY. I find when I put part A in the warm water bath, it helps with a couple of things. First of all, it does make it um, thinner, so it makes it easier to measure the epoxy. It also makes it easier to mix um, part A and B together. So I know that I'm getting a nice even mix with my, with my two parts, and it also reduces bubbles. The last thing I find when I heat the epoxy is it does glide onto um, the, the tumbler smoother. So this is true for CC DIY. Now the way that I um, prep my epoxy might be different depending on the brand that you use, but for me with CC DIY, this works. So I always start by putting part B in my tumbler first, or sorry, in my measuring cup first, because it is the thinner of the two parts. So it makes it so that it mixes easier together. So I'm just going to measure out here, five milliliters. And I'm going to take my part A out of the warm water bath. And the reason why I'm using the stainless steel tumbler is because this uh, retains the heat in the water better. So if I get called away for whatever reason, um, and I'm delayed being able to come into my workshop and, and mix up my epoxy, um, my water hasn't gone cold and my epoxy hasn't started to re-thicken again. So for me, that just gives me extra time. So if you're, if you're someone who often gets distracted, um, that's maybe a nice little tip for you there too. So I just transfer my epoxy um, into these bottles that I got at Dollar Tree and I just label them A and B so I don't get mixed up. All right, I use a metal stir stick. I don't like to use wood because wood does add bubbles. Um, there's air, it introduces air into your epoxy. Um, while I do torch my epoxy, I still like to have as few bubbles as possible. Um, and because it's CC DIY, I use a timer here to time three minutes of mixing. While I am mixing, I am sure to scrape the sides of my, of my cup. Um, epoxy does have a tendency to sort of get stuck on the sides and the bottom. Um, so I wanna make sure that I'm incorporating all of the epoxy in. The other thing that I do is I take my stir stick and I will scrape it on the side of my cup to make sure that I am getting that off as well. And then I will come up and I will scrape that off and I will bring it back into my epoxy mix. And I will do this for the full three minutes that I'm mixing. Um, you can also use a silicone stir stick without worrying about um, introducing bubbles and they're also very easy to clean when you're done. But uh, I just find that I like the way that the metal works better than the, um, than the silicone ones I have and that's more just about shape and length of the, of the scoop, uh, or sorry, of the mixing piece and of the handle itself as well if I'm using more epoxy and I have a deeper cup, I find this is easier for me to um, hold on to and mix the epoxy with than if I'm using one of my shorter silicone stir sticks. So I'm just gonna continue doing this process for the next two minutes and once my timer goes off, um, I will let you know what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so that's my timer. So I'm just going to scrape off my stir stick one more time and then I'm just going to take a lint-free cloth and I'm just gonna wipe it off. Um, you can use acetone or alcohol to wipe it off as well. However, I find that just by using the lint-free cloth and wiping it, that's enough, it cleans it well enough. So I do a lot of um, bad bubble mixing habits. I change direction, I take my scooper in and out. So I do often have a lot of bubbles in my epoxy when I mix it. So you will see there's quite a few bubbles in here right now, but if you look through the bubbles, you'll see that my epoxy is nice and clear. There's no cloudiness, which means that I have um, thoroughly mixed the two parts together. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait about five minutes for um, some of the lower bubbles to come to the surface to pop. 
Not all of them will, there will still be quite a few bubbles left, but I'm also going to be giving the chance of the two epoxies to kind of sit together and activate a little bit, which will also make it a little bit easier to put them on the tumbler. Okay, so my epoxy has been sitting now for about five minutes and you see that a lot of those bubbles have popped, but there's still quite a few in there. Um, I'm not too concerned about that though, because again, I do torch it. Um, even if you don't really see any bubbles or just a few bubbles in your epoxy, um, torching is always good anyway, because when you put your epoxy on your tumbler, um, you're always going to introduce some air and there might be some bubbles that you're going to be adding to your tumbler. So you want to avoid that. Um, so the tumbler I have here is has been um, sanded. It has been washed with Dawn dish soap and it has been thoroughly dried um, and it is level on my turner. So I'm now ready to apply a coat of epoxy onto this tumbler. So I am, as I've mentioned before, I am a scooper and a spreader. I like to control how much epoxy I put onto my tumbler at one point. Um, but that's really up to your personal preference. I use uh, my finger to apply it. I know some people prefer to use brushes. Um, I like to be able to feel if I've missed any spots with my hand um, or if there's too much epoxy in any one spot. Um, so that's why I like to apply it this way. Um, also, I do thin coats. I prefer to build a cup up, especially with how many layers of detail I usually end up putting on a tumbler. Thin coats um, are the way to keep my tumblers so that they aren't so bulky at the end when I'm done with them. Um, I always make sure to get the bottom and to get right around that rim here so you haven't missed any pieces. And it's just feeling a little bit thin in some areas, so I'm going to just kind of continue to add. I did not mix up too much or a lot of epoxy for this one. I only mixed up a total of 10 milliliters. Usually for this size, I mix up a total of 12 and a half, but um, I thought I was on final coat a step ago and something fell onto my, my tumbler and it kind of ruined the finish. So that was my bad. I took it off to look into, to look at it and then something fell. So don't do that just let things spin leave them well enough alone so i always make sure as i said to scrape the bottom i don't want to have any excess um, epoxy on the bottom because i don't want it to develop around the rim of the bottom there and create a wobble for me also i want to make sure that i'm bringing it all the way to the rim of my tumbler so then that way uh, i'm not missing any spots up towards the top so again i'm going to give this just a few minutes to sit uh, about five minutes and this will once again allow any of those bubbles that are a little bit lower in the epoxy to kind of come up to the surface and it will make it easier to torch and to get rid of all of those little micro bubbles that might be in the epoxy that i maybe don't see now but you will definitely see in your finish when you're scrutinizing it later so my tumbler has been turning for about five minutes now um, if you follow CCDIY and you have been doing any type of research on um, micro bubbles and how to remove them, you would know that CCDIY recommends the Burnsomatic TS4000 as well as propane um, for your fuel source over a butane torch. The reason for this is because CCDIY has a higher heat resistance than a lot of the other epoxies do. Um, I believe theirs is like 500 degrees Fahrenheit or something ridiculously high like that. Uh, propane burns at a higher rate than or higher temperature sorry than butane does so it, it kind of penetrates the surface of the epoxy a little bit easier making um, it easier to get that nice clear finish for um, your epoxy and to remove those bubbles. So I'm just going to um, start my torch now. You're going to notice when I'm torching that I work quickly. I do not concentrate my flame in any one spot for any amount of time. I don't want to risk burning my epoxy. Um, and also I want to keep it, well, I want you all to keep in mind that when you are torching epoxy, um, more VOCs are being released during that time than any other time when you're working with epoxy. So definitely, um, especially if you have a sensitivity to epoxy, be sure to be wearing an organic vapor um, mask. I, I know I'm not wearing one now, but again, it's harder for me to speak to you when I'm wearing them, but usually at this stage, I definitely would be.
so I just go over it once or one and a half times around that cup um, now what I'm going to do is I have made from uh, these 10.6 liter um, Ikea bins I just sort of cut out this little dome shape in the front I've made covers for my turners they're kind of ghetto but they were um, super budget friendly so I'm just going to cover my tumbler now and I'm going to come back in about an hour and 45 minutes and in an hour and 45 minutes no two hours and 45 minutes sorry uh, in two hours and 45 minutes I am going to pop my epoxy back part a back into a warm water bath um, I'm gonna let it sit in there for about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna mix up some more epoxy and I'm going to show you guys a flood coat and I will explain to you why I use a flood coat at this stage Okay, so just as before, before I um, measured my epoxy in a one-to-one -one ratio, what I did was I um, had warmed up my part A. And what I'm doing now is I'm mixing up more epoxy. Um, I'm mixing more than what I did the last time as well by about double um, because I'm going to be doing a flood coat. And the reason why I'm going to be doing a flood coat at this point um, for my final finish is because I want it to um, help get rid of any of the imperfections that were maybe on the last coat of my epoxy. So basically what I mean by that is after I wash and clean my tumblers and wipe them down and everything that I do, even if I've been super, super careful with them, there always seems to be a couple little pieces of, um, I guess, epoxy that sticks up, be it dust or what have you on them. And that's never been something that I was ever totally able to get rid of um, until about a year ago when I started doing flood coats when I was having issues with um, fish eyes, it, which was an environmental issue. I had too much humidity in my, air, uh, in my workshop. But what I found was when I um, added a flood coat, it, it eliminated the fish eyes. And I think that had to do with the fact that the original coat of epoxy that I put on was still tacky, so it kind of prevented the top coat of epoxy from pulling away. And what I also found was that because I hadn't resanded or, or you know, added any other impurities um, to the top of the tumbler, that flood coat helped to get rid of anything that was maybe um, sort of like left behind. Now, obviously, if you have something visible in your epoxy, like a hair or a stray piece of something um, that's contaminated it, you're still going to see that. So you want to make sure that as your epoxy and you're, you're paying attention to your coat and that you've removed those. But um, if you don't have anything that's visible, this will help get rid of some of those things that you kind of can't explain those, those unexplainable imperfections. Not going to be a hundred percent. I mean, these are handmade. You will still have a couple little things here and there, but I find that this gives me the absolute nicest coat. So the reason why I have to mix up more of the epoxy than I did before is because of the fact that um, the epoxy that I'm putting it onto is kind of sticky. So I don't want to really be disturbing that. So I'm going to be pouring a little bit more epoxy on, on that coat that I'm going to be doing now um, to make it easier to spread out so I'm not really disturbing that bottom layer of epoxy. I'm going to be doing that at a very minimal level. Um, so that's kind of why I do it this way. So what I'll do is I'll pour... Um, or I'll place a lot more of the epoxy onto that tumbler, um, that fresh coat that I did a couple hours ago. Um, and these are called recoat windows. Um, for CCDIY, it is between three to five hours, depending on your environment. I do find that when I heat my epoxy first and then combine with torching, and I do have my room a little bit warmer, um, I'm actually usually safe somewhere around the two and a half hour mark. Oh, that's my time. I'm usually safe somewhere around the two and a half hour mark. Um, but I still kind of do it around that three hour mark with the CCDIY guidelines say. Um, and this is something that based on your brand, you might want to look up what your recoat windows are because it's a really valuable thing to have. It's also a way that you can kind of eliminate, um, you know, like extra days or times between coats too. Um, I use it a lot when I'm, you know, trying to cover uh, a chunkier textured surface and I've put down one layer. Um, I might flood coat it a couple hours later to help sort of speed up the process of of making that tumbler. So my alarm did go off at the three minute mark, but when I mix more epoxy, I find that sometimes I need to mix for just a little bit longer. And again, I can tell 
because I'm looking for whether or not my epoxy looks clear or cloudy. Once it is fully clear, I feel comfortable with it. Um, you're also going to notice that I have fewer bubbles in this epoxy than what I had before. Um, because of the amount of epoxy I have in this cup, I can't be quite as rigorous uh, with my mixing. So I always find that when I have more in my cup, I have fewer bubbles. So this here looks pretty mixed, but just as before, I'm still going to let this sit for another um, five minutes to allow any um, bubbles to kind of go to the surface and to pop and also to allow that epoxy to have a chance to sort of activate um, together. So I will be back in a few minutes to show you how I put on a flood coat. Okay, so I'm now ready to put my epoxy on my spinning tumbler. So with the larger tumblers, I kind of start with just the top half of the tumbler and then work my way down so I'm not spreading it too thin over the entirety of the cup. And what I'm gonna do at the end is I'm gonna go over it with my gloved finger and remove any of the excess epoxy because um, I don't want there to be too much epoxy on here. I still wanna ultimately do a thinner coat. Um, I just need to be careful how thin that coat is and how it is that I'm spreading it on. Um, again, just so as not to disturb the layer of epoxy that's already on there that's just been um, spinning there for about three hours now. All right, so now just like I did before, I'm going to take my gloved finger and I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to pull the epoxy all the way up and I'm doing this to remove any excess epoxy and I am also doing this to make sure that I haven't missed any spots and that the epoxy I have on there is even. And you'll be able to tell, if you're using your gloved hand, you'll be able to tell um, with this coat, if you've missed anything, if your glove starts to catch the stickier epoxy below it. But you shouldn't have that problem if you were pretty um, generous with the amount of epoxy you first put on your tumbler. Now you don't want to take off too much because if you take off too much um, you're going to start having issues with it kind of pulling away in other ways or, or disturbing your bottom layer and you don't want to have that happen but um, you'll be able to kind of feel if it's if it's getting harder like or muddier to kind of pull through and just a reminder to really uh, kind of go over the bottom of your tumbler so then that way you don't have any excess epoxy that will build up around the edges of your of your bottom that might potentially cause um, any wobbling that you might have with an uneven bottom. So again, just like I did last time, I'm going to let this spin for about five minutes, allow any bubbles that are trapped underneath to kind of surface before I'm gonna come in with my torch one last time. Okay, so it's been five minutes. I'm now gonna come back in with my propane torch. I'm gonna light it up, and just as I did before, I'm going to quickly torch it. Final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a Q-tip or you can use a lint-free cloth, anything um, that you have on hand, and I'm going to take a little bit of acetone and I am just going to clean that rim of my tumbler with the acetone so that way I'm sure that no epoxy has spilled onto the rim that I would then have to worry about um, cutting off without breaking a seal later. I don't want to have to be even considering that, so I just clean it up with acetone at this stage immediately. 
that will save me the hassle later. And the reason why um, I torch before I do the acetone, even though I'm using very little on here, and even though acetone does dry rather quickly, um, acetone is very flammable, so I don't want to be taking my torch and lighting it up um, right close to where I've just put acetone um, in such a short amount of time, because I don't want to accidentally light any fires. So. so yeah, so that is that is it. Now what I will do is I will recover my tumbler and I will allow it to continue to spin for the next few hours until it is set up enough that I can turn it off. And then I will do final inspection on my tumbler um, once it is dry enough to handle and is no longer sticky. Thanks again for watching. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and haven't subscribed yet, you can do so by clicking on my logo above. Also, if you give that little notification bell a tickle, then you'll be notified of any future videos I post. If you want to watch more of my videos, you can check out the video button right next to me there or check out my playlist. Thanks again, and I'll be back soon with more Tumblr tips and tutorials.